If you're not born an optimist and you're not born a pessimist, you're born as a blank slate and you learn these behaviours and you can relearn anything and unlearn anything. So if you've noticed negativity or pessimism, maybe that's a lifetime pattern or maybe you're just going through a rough patch and you want to get your sparkle back, then these three steps will help you. Now recently in my community via our regular emails, I was sharing with people four common things that pessimists do so that you can catch yourself if you do this because those are the times that are most powerful if you like to practice these three steps of optimism as a way to interrupt old patterns and to ingrain a new way of perceiving and interacting with life. So I'll quickly share those four things in case you're not on my email list. So I regularly send out every single week, I send out a message and uh, help training and tips. You can get on that list if you want to, it's free. Uh, I'll put a link with this video. But here are the four things we went through. Common traits or signs of pessimism. Number one, interpretation of situations, people or life is immediately negative as a starting point. So you might be able to work your way to a different viewpoint, but the starting point is negative, pessimistic, downside, dark side. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second sign or common trait of pessimism is exaggeration. Okay, so you take a difficult scenario, facts of a situation or facts of how someone's behaving, it's not good, you don't need to be Pollyanna positive about it, but what happens is pessimists will tend to exaggerate or expand the negativity and it feeds. By the way, as pessimists, a reformed pessimist, you don't do it on purpose. You're not trying to be a negative Nelly. It's just a habit and it's an, often an accidental thing. So you exaggerate or you expand on it. It's like feeding and growing the originating negative viewpoint of what's happening, which often makes it worse. So the third trait or third sign is making assumptions that the negative thing, the situation, person, behavior, whatever's going on in life, which are the facts of the situation, you're making an assumption that it's pervasive or permanent, meaning it can't be fixed, there's no solution, it's gonna be like this forever, and it becomes this sort of dramatic doomsday type scenario. And there's varying degrees of that, but the point is, is that the go-to is it's not resolvable and it's gonna be around forever. The fourth and final common trait is projection. This is a really big one, and I was really bad at doing this. <laughs> We're gonna truth tell for a moment. The fourth one is projection, where you take the events of an isolated situation and you blow it up to mean it's going to affect all areas of your life. So rather than keeping the issue contained in the context of the situation, meaning something affecting this one little area of your life or something at work or something that's impacting your money in this area or whatever it is, something that's going on in society, you project it and it becomes all encompassing and you make a projection that it's going to affect every area of your life. Okay, so those are really common things that we might accidentally do as pessimists. So if you notice these things, hold love and compassion for yourself because you're human and we're all human and being human's messy. But here are three things that you can do, the steps for optimism, they're not the only things, but they're really, really simple things that you can do pretty much immediately on a daily basis, okay? You just want to remember this acronym, CGO, CGO stands for Conscious Interpretation, Gratitude and Optimism, CGO. So this is one of the little steps in my 30 day to optimism training in my online course that we go through. So these counter those issues of pessimism. The first one is make a conscious interpretation, which means you have to pause or interrupt yourself if you go off on a pessimistic tangent and ask yourself, actually, what are the pure neutral facts of the situation? because we're so used to as human beings loading up our thoughts, feelings, beliefs, opinions and drama on top of everything that actually if we strip it all away most of it is made up interpretation and very little of it is fact. So you want to get in the habit of consciously interpreting the facts and the facts alone doesn't mean you're not allowed to have your feelings. You can feel whatever way you want about it. You can feel upset, you can feel worried, you can feel fearful, you can feel aggrieved, whatever you, your feelings are. But you want to interpret as best as you can the neutral 
facts of a situation, okay? And so you just say to yourself, what is a neutral way I can look at this situation? Okay, what can I write down that I know is absolutely factual evidence about this situation? And if you want to go a step further, what's positive about this situation if you feel like you could make that stretch? Okay, neutral is always available because you're not being negative or positive if you just call the facts of life about something. We just don't want to load it up with anything extra in terms of a pessimistic attitude. Okay, so we're not making judgment, we're not making up opinions about it, we're just calling it for what it is. The second step, once you've made a conscious and neutral interpretation, is to focus on gratitude. Now, this isn't painting a silver lining on a cloud. What we're doing here is if you want to be an optimist, which is life-changing, in a moment where you're feeling pessimistic, you really need to shift your energy. You need to shift your worldview. You need to snap your mind out of the pattern. You need to shock it out of that path it's going down. And the quickest way to go from that kind of, you know, turmoil in your mind or your feelings where you're feeling really pessimistic about something, the quickest way to snap out of that is to think, think of something you're really grateful for because it will fill your mind and your heart with this higher vibration energy, this energy of love, this energy of joy, this energy of happiness, this completely different way of looking at life. Now, if you just pick a couple of things that you know will work for you, you can use them in an instant. So people that you really love, things that make you really happy, moments in time when you've been really blissful. If you can only find one thing, that's okay. You only need one thing. So you've made a conscious interpretation, then you immediately, CG, you go to gratitude. And all you have to do is say, I am grateful for this person, this thing in my life, this roof over my head, that joyous moment, that funny thing I watched on Netflix, um, you know, the smile on a baby's face. So find something that you can immediately give thanks for because it will interrupt and shock your mind out of the pattern. It will probably put a smile on your face and it shifts your energy. Now, why is that important? Because that leads you into the capacity to reach for the third step, which is optimism. So conscious, neutral interpretation, gratitude makes a shift. Third, CGO, optimism. What you want to do is look for possibility in the situation. Look for a new perspective that offers something else, offers hope, offers faith, offers resilience, offers a different type of outlook about the person, the events, the situation, society, yourself, whatever it is that you're feeling down and out about. So there are many ways of looking at any situation. You will always find evidence for what you're looking for. So if you look for a pessimistic viewpoint, you'll find it. If you look for an optimistic viewpoint, you'll find it. If you look for negati negativity, you'll find it. If you look for positivity, you'll find it. If you look for neutrality, you'll find it. The thing is, is what you look for, you will find, and what you find becomes your whole way of looking at the world, and then you think and feel in alignment, you behave and act that way, your energy vibrates at that level, your whole experience of life becomes that. So you want to train yourself to look optimistically for possibility. Okay, this terrible thing's happened, but what else might be possible? What if, instead of going, what if the worst thing happens? What if something else is going to become possible here? What if there's a solution to this? What if this person is actually able and capable of being more or doing more? What if this relationship could be healed? What if it can't be healed, but I could find something else better for myself? What if, even though I've lost this job, it could lead to something better where I have a career change or more income possibilities or a, a whole different trajectory for my life? You're looking for different what-if possibilities to bring any practice of optimism, any optimistic thought that you can reach for in that moment. And I tell you what, it does take practice <laughs> if you're used to being pessimistic or maybe you're a neutral person or an optimistic person naturally, but something really bad is happening. Then a person who's quite practiced at being optimistic or neutral or resilient or filled with hope and faith and possibility and is really capable of holding an open mind and heart and plays with life that way and life responds if really bad things happen it can be a stretch okay it can be a real stretch to practice optimism you're not asked to be positive optimism is not positivity positivity is just being happy positive right some situations that's not very natural when things are really difficult 
it's not easy just to be happy and positive. And in fact, it would probably not be natural or right or appropriate, but you can be optimistic. Optimism says something else is possible. Optimism says there's hope. Optimism says I will keep my mind and my heart open. Optimism says I will look for solutions. Optimism says I won't waste my energy going down the hole of this issue because somebody needs to find the path forward and I'm going to be that person, right? And so it's training yourself to lean into solutions and to lean into new possibilities. So remember those three steps to be an optimist. C-G-O, conscious, neutral interpretation of the fact gratitude quick moment to shift your energy then lean into reach for an optimistic thought of a possibility that counters whatever you've been thinking about okay catch yourself in the moment practice it it takes practice like anything if you want to build the muscle you've got to regularly use it if you need any other help if you need extra resources if you want to get my regular emails and stay in touch practical tips tools free resources and more you can subscribe i'll put a link with this video so that you can head over to my website if you want to dive in with me I have my 30 days to optimism course we go through daily emails daily audio lessons daily practices and I give you Q&A support to help you on that journey into leaping forward with your optimism it makes a remarkable difference in your life I can attest to that it's been great sharing this with you if you want more videos like this and you're here on my social media please subscribe and I look forward to staying in touch